Hey guys, it's Tarun Verma. Today we're going to talk about benzodiazepines. Just benzodiazepines as a whole, as a general category. This is one of the um, uh, comments that was left in one of our videos. Uh, they wanted to know more about just benzodiazepines and then their use and then the impact of withdrawal symptoms on benzodiazepines. So, buddy, this is for you. Let, let's do it. Let's dig into it. So, benzodiazepines. What kind of benzodiazepines are we talking about? What are benzodiazepines? <laughs> Let me see if I can get all of these in. I'm gonna miss some, but we're talking about alprazolam, clonazepam, temazepam, oxazepam, triazolam, lorazepam, fluoropram, fluorazepam. It could turn into a rap song either way, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, so it's a lot of them. It's a lot of these PAMs is essentially what you're looking for. It's the name and then the ending will be Zepam. Z-E-P-A-M, that's what we're looking at. These things, here's the scary thing about benzodiazepines. Tons of people are on them, tons of people are having trouble, tons of people out there are having trouble with these medications. Um, they don't know how it works. That is insane. I, I, it always trips me up because there's, there's a few categories of medications as pharmacists that I dispense, or as all pharmacists dispense, where nobody knows how it works. The medical community has no idea. We're still doing studies, but we just know that when we give them to people, this happens and we like this response. So now all of a sudden there's a link to it. So benzodiazepines are generally for a lot of different things. We're talking about anxiety, we're talking about seizures, we're talking about uh, depression, um, withdrawal from narcotic medications, opioids, as the, that's the big one in the news, or even you know your crack cocaine, alcohol, things like that, um, dependence, that, these help with all that. It even helps old ladies trying to fall asleep right so it's used for a lot of different things and what separates all of these pams from each other let's go into that it some are good at targeting certain things so there are some pams zepams that are good for sleep some are good for seizures um, and then others are good for anxiety so it all kind of just depends on what you what therapeutic outcome you're looking for you and your doctor are looking for and that's that's the PAM that you take. I'm just gonna call them PAMs because the PAM sounds weird. The PAM is good. So yeah, I'm just gonna say PAM. The PAMs are good. Uh, they work, they, they think that it works by hitting your GABA-A receptors. Now, is that supposed to mean anything to you guys? No, no, not really. They, they think it also has uh, activity to benzo, benzapine, benzodiazepine receptors, BZ1 and BZ2 receptors. BZ1 receptors are for sleep, BZ2 our receptors are for like your motor somatic functions and things like that. So again, that's a scary thing. They just don't know how it works, but it works in your brain. And to me, that's a red flag. I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, let's see here. Generally, and this is another scary thing about these things, is that you're not supposed to be on these medications for more than 10 days. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably on this, what, several pills a day for months now? Mm, think about that for a second. If you're only supposed to be on this clinically, in by the books, by the science, the science says you're not supposed to be on this for more than 10 days because then you start having withdrawal and dependence issues. There are people on this who've been on this every single day for sleep for years or multiple times a day for anxiety for months or years. That's dangerous because you're letting something completely take a hold of your brain like that. So I personally don't like it, but we see it in practice a lot. And as pharmacists, we can't really say no because at the end of the day, the doctors are like, this is what we want. So, but we can't educate people. And that, that's where I come in. I, I'm, I feel strongly about that. We can't really change the fact that doctors are, are still gonna prescribe this stuff in the max and people are gonna take it to the max, but you can't educate them as to kind of the dangers of this stuff. So, okay, um, withdrawal. Let's talk about your withdrawal symptoms of just being on the medication. If you're on this stuff for years and years and years, months and months and months, you can't just get off of this cold turkey. It is going to hurt. Your body is physiologically bound to this drug now. So you have to taper off slowly. So you have to kind of take less and less of the dose over like, uh, well, if you're on it for years, it's gonna take you at least a month to two months to get off of it. If you're on it for a few months, you could probably wean off in about two weeks probably. And you have to talk to your doctor about a good tapering dose. Tapering mean you, you start off large and you go smaller. Tapering a uh, withdrawal uh, cycle to get off the medication in general. Now, um, 
let me go through a list of just some of the things you have to watch out for and then I'm going to end with the whole dependence thing because there's a lot of issues with dependence on this medication. You do get dependent on it. Again, it works on your brain. The longer you're on it, the more of a hold it takes on you. Um, it increases incidence of suicidality. Now, it all depends on the different Zepans you're on, but some cause more of an issue with suicidality than others. Let me explain that. Suicidality means an increased uh, thoughts of suicide in your in your mind. That's scary. That's not cool. But there's a very severe side effect that happens with this. It's a side effect that happens with all antidepressants and and kind of anxiety reducers. Is it creates this issue? We don't know why it happens. Again, we don't even know why the medicine works. To be honest, but why the suicidality part happens, we don't know. We just know to always caution people on it. Um, breakthrough anxiety. So if you start to kind of taper off and you taper off a little too quickly, you're going to get something called breakthrough anxiety where it's going to kick up. So say, um, you know, you, you don't take your pills for a couple of days. You're going to all of a sudden just get anxious for no reason. That's breakthrough anxiety. It's going to come through. Um, if you're weaning off and you're not doing a good job of it, it can cause depression because again, you're using this medication to keep you completely even keeled, keep you leveled out. But when you're not on it anymore, then all of a sudden your emotions are going to fluctuate, causing bouts of happiness, bouts of depression. I can also call cause, and this is something out of movies, but enterograde uh, amnesia, which is a temporary, if you're on a lot of this stuff, if you're on it, then it could cause this, this amnesia that prevents you from making new memories for a little while in, in, in the current time. You still have all your old memories. But if you're trying to remember new stuff, then, then that may be, and you're having this kind of amnesia, then it's a sign that you're taking too much of this stuff. Um, respiratory depression, same thing when you're taking this medication, it evens you out, it, it kind of brings you down. Same thing with your breathing, it actually causes respiratory depression. So that's very dangerous, which is why you don't want to drink or take other drugs on these medications. It's very, very, very dangerous because there's that synergistic added effect and you're not gonna I know what people think oh I'm gonna get a super high out of it yes that super high could kill you though so don't do that kind of stuff right um, and then that, that also links up with like an impaired gag reflex meaning that if you take the if you take a ton of these pills the same night that you're partying and you're taking other drugs and, and alcohol and you OD on any of it and in the middle of the night your body responds by throwing up you possibly, there's a good chance you can't, your body won't even let you throw up because the pills won't let you throw up. And if you can't throw up, you're gonna suffocate on your own vomit and die. So just think about that and don't do dumb stuff, people, because we don't want you to die for these really horrific kind of ways. That's just terrible. Um, excessive sedation. Um, taking too much of this stuff also causes you to really just sleep way more than, than usual. And if you're like anybody else out in the world, you're waking up at a certain time and going to work, if you're too groggy, you're too, um, if you're too tired, it's going to impair your function. Say you're driving to work and then you're nodding off. That's not a good thing. So watch out for that. Um, let's talk about the dependence issue. A lot of doctors use this medication as one medication of several that they use for treating addiction and dependence from hard, uh, hard narcotics and drugs, um, opioids that we see, so prescription medications, and then alcohol. Now, the big thing about this is, is that, here's the way I explain it, and this is where my own two cents comes in. So everything I've talked about up until now is all rooted in science and all in kind of the books that we use, right? So science, irrefutable facts. We're not talking about, you know, he say, she say. But now we are with this whole, topic of addiction that I'm going to get into. For me and what I've seen in practice out there is addiction is almost a personality disorder type of thing. Um, you generally have that gene in you to be addicted to something, right? So alcohol, drugs, they make it easier for you to be addicted to something. But just at the same time, if we get you off of crack cocaine, you could just as easily tell me tomorrow I'm addicted to Lay's potato chips and, and you can't stop eating them and you'll gain a ton of weight. They just have these addictive personalities, the, the, these type of people. And benzodiazepines are good about kind of helping you curb those cravings, but the problem is when you wean off of one aggravating agent that is causing addiction, you can get addicted to the thing that is helping you get away from the addiction. So benzodiazepines are one class. There are like naloxones and buprenorphines, suboxones. So if you just, 
If any of that just sounds real familiar, that is used to help get you off of hard, hard medication. So narcotics, uh, opioids, that's what you use. And you use this in conjunction with the benzodiazepines to get you off these things. Problem is, your body then develops a dependence to these things. So you'll get off of the opioids or you'll get off of crack cocaine and heroin and stuff, but then you'll get addicted to these things that we put you on to get you off those things. And then you could kind of see how that cycle is never really broken. So again, you have to use this stuff responsibly. Like you should every so often, you need to go back to the doctor and reassess how long you've been on your benzodiazepines. That is very important. A lot of doctors don't do that because they're just so busy. And, and, the, and the thing about benzodiazepines that makes it so tricky is the fact that there is such a big safety margin. Let me explain that. Meaning that safety doses of the medication are here, toxic doses are way up here. Meaning we never see people ODing on benzodiazepines. I mean, I, I'm sure it happens. I've never seen it personally myself or even heard about it. It's just so much, you know? So that's why doctors love this medication, right? So you can take a good amount of these medications without killing yourself. And that's, that's what they like about these medications. Opioids, man, you take one too many, you're dead. You take one too many sleep pills, you're dead, right? But benzodiazepines are generally on the safer side of things when it comes to dosages. And for people that are addicted, they don't care about dosages. They're just gonna take, 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 right? But so we don't ever really see people dying because of these. Now, if you die because you were pairing alcohol with benzodiazepines, yes, I've seen those cases before. Uh, benzodiazepines with drugs, yes, I've seen patients die from those but not from benzodiazepines alone, which is why it's so common. Now you're probably wondering after everything I talked about why are doctors prescribing it? Because of that, that reason right there, because there's such a huge safety margin with these medications. But at the same time, they come with that addiction potential that you always have to watch out for. So if you're taking it for sleep and you've been on it for a very, very long time, maybe you need to go have that conversation with your doctor and say, hey, um, is there something else I could maybe try to get myself off of so I can like maybe melatonin or something else that help me with sleep. Um, maybe like a low dose antidepressant. The, those things are better. They don't have an addiction potential with it. Um, so you kind of have to watch for that. Now, again, withdrawal, you need to make sure you taper off. We've gone through that. Uh, addiction, again, it really is on individuals, right? Some individuals are good about it, some are not. But if you have that addictive personality, there's a good chance you could get addicted to these medications as well. Now. Let me also mention for a small part, and we're almost done, I'm almost done, but there are a lot of people who use this for emotional purposes. When life gets really hard, panic attacks. Um, I've had a lot of patients who will take this when there's like a death in the family or something, and this is to kind of help them get through those emotional humps that they have. Um, and again, it's very easy to get addicted. I had a patient who did it once one time where there was a death in the family, they went out to wherever it was, um, went to the funeral, they came back, and they started taking low doses of benzodiazepines to kind of help them out because the anxiety was so big and I completely understood it. And I was in support of it. But then, two, three months later, they were still on it. In fact, the dosages were going up and they were like, I just have, I just, I, I just need it. I can't go a day without it. I, I'm having these panic attacks and I'm going, okay, well then there's something else wrong that you're not treating. There's like an underlining issue. Maybe you need to go to a therapist. Maybe you need to talk to a doctor. You need to maybe hash some things out emotionally. And what you're doing is you're taking these pills to cut, to create a band-aid, a temporary band-aid for some emotional trauma there. And you can't do that. You can't allow that. A lot of doctors are okay with just prescribing it. And I'm making doctors sound bad here. They're not, but they're, they're really, really great. Um, but I also put a lot of focus on patients taking their healthcare into their own hands and then working with doctors to make sure that you are healthy. That's, that's the ideal way to do this. Um, and so again, this patient started taking it and then they, they started taking long acting benzodiazepines. So benzodiazepines in general are, the differences range anywhere from some that work really, really quickly to ones that work all day long. So that's kind of the reason why you're also on different types. Not only what you need it to do, but how long you need the effect to be. So they were also taking a long acting benzodiazepine with short acting benzodiazepines for any, any acute pain, panic attacks that were happening. So again, that gets to be very, very dangerous stuff, guys, and you have to watch out for it. And you have to question if you're on it much longer, like why am I? If, if there was a, a big traumatic event that happened, PTSD, something like that, and I'm still on these medications, is that appropriate? 
is there any way I could wean off of this stuff? Because again, this stuff will take a hold of you in your brain and nothing good really comes on of this stuff when you're on this stuff for too long. But if you use it for what it's for, which is a crutch, then it's appropriate. Because again, when you break a leg, you use that crutch till your, till your leg is healed and then you toss that sucker in a corner. That's what these pills should be. They should be that crutch that when you need it, it's there for you, sleep, anxiety, um, depression, what have you, but once you can kind of get over that hump through other ways, then you throw this stuff aside. You're not supposed to be on it for that long, guys. So again, um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, this was my big sort of rant about benzodiazepines and things to watch out for. Uh, I'm sure I may have left some things off, but I, I kind of got worked up. So I kind of got focused on, on a tangent, just ran with it. So, But if you have any specific questions about certain benzodiazepines, leave some comments down below, guys. Give us a like to the page. Um, we'll make some videos on the uh, different peens, PAMs, however you want to say it. And uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next time. Keep it locked on this page. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.